We're on day three of the installation using an existing airframe and uh, removal of the O200 engine so we can install a Viking 130 engine. We've yet not actually installed the engine. We're preparing the airplane by modifying the existing systems. Here we have uh, completed now the center console, which is very easy to work on from a chair, basically, on each side of the airplane, just by removing the side panels and making a cutout for our electrical panel. Here we can see it all completed, bundled, and we're testing the fit. Clearly, it's important that wires are organized here you can see the service loop we installed in order to be able to pull our own panel out for easy access. And we're also verifying from the site that none of the cables are touching the rudder cables. One good idea too with the rudder pedals is you can take some brake line and slice it and install it over the cable just in case for some abrasion protection. Just make sure that it does not prevent the full travel of the rudder pedals. While we were working today, we had a traditionally equipped um, airplane trying to get going. And while we have had the tail supported on this airplane in order to compensate for the lack of weight up front after we removed the O200 engine, we're now finally able to, or ready to hoist the Viking 130 and install it. As you can see, we're using four individual good quality ratchet straps, and we do this so that we can level the engine as we install it. As you can see, the four individual ratchet straps are accessible in order to lift or lower one corner at a time as needed. Keep in mind that the engine is level when the gearbox is vertical or when obviously the engine mounting attach points on their back are horizontal. And we did get to throw the um, 130 on the scale too before installation as we remove the O200 we weighed it after draining the oil of that engine and it weighed somewhere between 241 and all the way up to 275 with all the stuff thrown on it but basically an empty engine was 241 here's the 130 which has 30 more horsepower at least 30 more horsepower and with oil um, it weighs 236 pounds on the scale here we are trying to put some tension on the um, um, original rubber puck system that basically holds the airplane up and the weight of the engine up and provides some kind of suspension when you're landing and um, it's the first time I've really played around with this and n not not that impressed um, very difficult or cumbersome to tension you have to actually use the two collars on the bottom tighten one up and then pry against it and tighten the top one and then reposition the bottom one and pry again and very very cumbersome procedure and then once it's all said and done trying to get any kind of suspension out of it is, is very limited um, maybe half an inch or so so I'm still favoring the steel bungee on this um, over both the original rubber shock cord and this uh, for ease of uh, installation and tensioning and uh, travel and so forth Now, that being said, um, I can see an improvement to this by um, machining a collar at the bottom that had an adjustment to it. But the way it's set up now, now very cumbersome.
and we're getting into the details. The engine has been mounted with the uh, rubber cushions and the right bolts. By the way, there is an update to that. We're using longer sleeves now in the rubber cushions or the silicone cushions. The, they used to crack at the edges and we found that to be because this steel sleeve inside was a, a little bit short and putting too much pressure on the actual conical mount. So that's been alleviated now with a little bit of a longer sleeve that is available. The throttle cable installation, we wanted dual throttles. So they have been routed onto the engine from pilot co-pilot side. And you can see the clip here that holds that all in place. Now with a dual throttle installation, I like to remove the friction lock portion on the co-pilot side just in case somebody were to inadvertently tighten the co-pilot side, it would make the pilot side lock up and not usable. So we undo the thumb screw, remove the Teflon conical um, insert, and but leave it on the pilot side for setting friction instead of having it on each side of the airplane. One nice thing about these Teflon line throttle cables is how little friction they have. And you can actually get away with quite a turn without seeing any increase in friction. So here we see the co-pilot throttle coming out of the firewall and making its bend up to the engine. So here we again see the throttles and the details associated with that. So why is it so important to pay attention to all these details about throttles? Well, because without the throttle, guess what? It's just like having an engine stoppage in the air if, if the throttle were to fail or lock up. So it's extremely important that the throttles are routed properly and that their uh, aircraft grade cables are used, meaning uh, 1032 or a quarter inch throttles with Teflon lining and that none of the bicycle style stuff like um, push-pull wire type throttles or springs or anything like that are used on airplane. And here we can also see the pilot side throttle arriving to the uh, throttle assembly. And the top one is for the uh, pilot side. It uses a clip that goes in a groove on the cable. And then a couple of washers underneath because the washers prevent things from getting bent and mangled. So the clip is sitting on top of the cable. There is an indent in the clip that goes in the groove. There are two washers underneath to prevent it part from being bent when it's tightened down yet has enough force to engage the dimple into the groove. And then we repeat the same on the bottom throttle cable, two washers, the clip that holds it, and then the nuts on the bottom to hold everything together. So for this, you might need uh, an extra set of fingers to be able to hold it together while you assemble it. And here are the two cables further towards the actual throttle lever. And as you can see, there is a connector piece and two jam nuts, and then a ball socket arrangement that snaps onto the throttle itself. And we're starting to complete things. We now have the starter cable installed, contactors are finished, and the only thing remaining are bundling and protection of the wires. And here we are removing a plug in order to install a fitting that will carry hot coolant to the engine or cabin heater that is installed inside the airplane past the firewall. Jumping around a little bit in this video because there's so many like smaller tasks 
Here are the, here's the starter wire coming underneath the intake manifold protected by um, split loom and also the alternator wire attached to the starter lug going from there to the alternator. Very important to strain relieve cables that are on the engine that come from the firewall to the engine and also things like an alternator cable going from the starter or the, the which basically has the the main current uh, wire going onto the engine and over to the starter or over to the alternator so the alternator can then charge the batteries through the starter cable when uh, when it's not used to start the engine but we do pay attention to holding this cable because there's vibration on an engine and you don't want an alternator wire to break at the terminal as it enters the uh, alternator or onto the starter. And here you see the same idea. As soon as the cable leaves the terminal that screws onto the alternator, it is strain relieved right to the alternator so that it will vibrate with the alternator and prevent it from breaking. The latest Viking engine installations have an offset engine mount, meaning that it's built to compensate for torque and P-factor. Because of that, the right side of the engine uh, on the back is closer to the firewall than the left side of the engine. And because of that, it's got more difficult to be able to fit an air filter. Now, we have several uh, solutions for that. We have the offset air filters like these, uh, which we shorten the flange on just a little bit, and it is enough to clear. We also have other uh, foam type of filters that are able to clear. So just contact us for that if you have such an issue. And now we're also running the fuel line from the front of the engine to the fuel filter on the firewall, the high pressure one. Here's something new. If you have an X or a tie wrap on this hose, here we have a X and a tie wrap. Uh, it indicates that this stainless steel bullet has been installed in the thermostat bypass hose. We found this to, in the airplane application, operate the thermostat more accurately. And particularly in the winter time, it is able to build up to the correct temperature of 180 to 200 degrees and make the thermostat do its job better. The engines are also back to not using any pressure in the cooling system. We've been able to achieve this again, which we had in the past, more reliably by using a larger coolant tank on the firewall and then just running this hose to it without a pressure cap. The coolant bottle is just much larger than in the past and it's providing a, a reservoir for additional fluid and it becomes less finicky as far as the top level and the bottom level. Now this tank doesn't have to be up on top of the firewall, it can actually be towards the bottom of the firewall, which makes it a lot easier to find room for a much bigger tank like this. It's a quite a good upgrade for existing installations as well. Time to start installing probes so we can measure the temperatures and pressures of the engine. Here's the uh, temperature probe for the gearbox. This will feed the information to an MGL screen in the cockpit.
This one's a little bit harder to see, but that's for the coolant temperature. Also go into the MGL screen. Again, the heater fitting installed into the engine with its 3 8 fuel injection hose installed and clamp, routing it underneath the intake manifold par parallel with the fuel hose, and then a grommet right into the airplane. And there's the top hose. So there's a bottom and a top hose, a feed and a return. The heater was installed on the side of the co-pilot's legs. This was the original grounding point of the airplane. So we reused that. However, we ran the cables also to uh, se a separate grounding bus that we used for the engine. We also are showing the grounding straps running from the firewall and the batteries to the engine.